Hello friends, this is me Zubair Ahmad and welcome to my channel Learn 11MD. Um, so most of my friends uh, and juniors were asking me about some high yield topics like which topic they should cover for the step 2 and the step 3 exams and some of them were asking for the mentorship like to help them to teach these topics. So I thought to record a few videos and upload on my channel so that everyone can, should get the help from this lectures. So today I am going to start about the most important topic, the screening guidelines. And it's very high yield for step 2 CK and step 3. And today I will cover only three like the most common cancers like the colon cancer, lung cancer and the cervical cancer. So let's start with the colon cancer. This is the colon cancer screening. So this applies between the patient's age of 45 to 75 years. So we will start screening for the colon cancer from the age of 45 years and this rule apply for patient with average risk the average risk means the patient with no prior diagnosis of colon rectal cancer or adenomatous polyps or inflammatory bowel disease or any family history or genetic disorders uh, or the patient they have the first degree relative only one not like more than one first degree relative but single with age greater than 60 with colon screening or adenomatous polyp and which test do we recommend for the screening? So the gold standard test is the colonoscopy and we usually do repeat this test after like every 10 years. Uh, and other options we also have like few, most of the patients uh, refuses for the colonoscopy. So we have few other tests like high sensitivity, fecal occult blood test or fecal immunochemical uh, test. So this test we do every year. Or stool DNA fit every we will do every one to three years. Our computer tomography, colonography, in computer tomography, colonography, this test is usually done every five years. And flexible sigmoidoscopy, this test also done every five years. And flexible sigmoidoscopy every 10 years when we are doing annual fit. If you are, if you are doing the annual fit test every year and patient is agree for the sigmoidoscopy, then you have to do sigmoidoscopy every 10 years. So these are the list of tests we can do for the recommend like the screening of the colon cancer. If any of these tests you can get like the positive results and you are suspecting the patient is going for the colon cancer, is developed colon cancer. So next step should be the colonoscopy and with the biopsy. And this these guidelines were for the patient with the average risk, as I told you earlier. What if patients are at increased risk? Now, which patient can be at increased risk? The number one category comes between uh, like the first degree relative whose age is less than 60 with colon cancer or some adenomatous polyp or greater than or equal to two first degree relatives at any age. So in these patients, we usually do colonoscopy at age 40 or 10 years, whichever comes first. For example, like patients first degree relative has, uh, like has colon cancer at age of 55 years. So we have to do prior 10 years or at age of 40. So 55, the prior 10 will be 45. So we will start from the 40. If patients first degree relative has colon cancer at age of 48 years, then the first 10 years will come first. Like at age of 38, we will start the screening. And we usually repeat uh, every three to five years and we have to go for the colonoscopy in these cases. So in normal, we were doing after every 10 years here we have to do every three to five years with increased risk and the other group comes for the inflammatory bowel disease like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease with colonic involvement and these patients we usually do like eight to ten years after the diagnosis if patient diagnosed today with ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease which has a colonic involvement then from after the 10 years we will start screening for these patients and 12 to 15 years if disease only on the left colon so these are the guidelines and we usually repeat every one to three years also there's one more important point they can ask high yield point in the US assembly exams like if patient is diagnosed with for, for example patient is diagnosed with ulcerative colitis and patient has also at the same time you are diagnosed with primary sclerosing cholangitis when will you screen for the colon cancer at this time we will screen at the time of the diagnosis. 
and then we will continue every one to two years. In normal cases, we were doing one to three years. In this cases, we will do one to two years. Next class comes like for the classic familial adenomatous polyp process. So in this patient, we usually start skinning at the age 10 to 12 and we usually repeat annually. And for the Lynch syndrome, we start colonoscopy at age 20 to 25 years and we usually repeat every one to two years. And in these patients, we can give aspirin as a prophylaxis. And also remember like Lynch syndrome is associated with endometrial cancer. So we also start if patient is with the Lynch syndrome, colonoscopy, they can mix these things in questions. So if patient is with the Lynch syndrome, we also has to screen for the endometrial cancer. And when this screening will start, this will start at the age of 30. And endometrial through what like what we'll do for the screening, the endometrial biopsy or the sampling. And we usually repeat it every one to two years. And in these patients, we usually offer the total hysterectomy and bilateral sulpangiophorectomy after the child beginning age, like uh, most likely after if patient says like my family is complete, I do not want more child. So you can offer this option or after like 40 years, you can offer this option like total hysterectomy with bilateral sulpangiophorectomy is prophylaxis to prevent the cancer. Now I have one question for you, uh, like a 40 year old woman is evaluated to follow up for stage one endometrial cancer and diagnosed six weeks ago. Colon cancer was skinned in her mother at age of 55 years and her maternal art at age of 60 years. The patient has a total abdominal hysterectomy and bilateral ophrectomy. Germline genetic testing confirmed pathogenic mutation of MSH2, which are the following is the most important screening strategy for this patient. Option A, fecal DNA testing, option B, fecal immunochemical testing, option C, upper endoscopy and colonoscopy, option D, upper endoscopy, colonoscopy and wireless capsule endoscopy. So if you want to think, you can stop my video and reread the question and pick an option in your mind. So the option is C, which is the correct option. I told you like it is MSH2, so you will think of the Lynch syndrome, which are the MLH1, MSH2, MSH6, and PMS2, or other epithelial cell ADN molecule gene mutations, which is common in the Lynch syndrome. So usually we, with the patient with the Lynch syndrome, uh, we start the colonoscopy at age of 20 to 50 years, I told you earlier, and we usually repeat it uh, like our two to five years before the earliest cancer diagnosis in the family. And also, in these patients, we screen for the stomach and the small intestine bowel cancers. And when do we screen for these? At age of 30 to 35 years. So here, the patient has, like, uh, patient's age is 40 years. So we will go for the endoscopy and colonoscopy because we will, all uh, with uh, colon, we also have to screen for the stomach and the small bowel cancers. Next is lung cancer screening. So lung cancer screening, what is the eligibility criteria like? Which patient should be screened for the lung cancer? The age is first always try to focus on the age in your questions. Like age should be for the lung cancer is 50 to 80. And which test we do is low dose CT scan. And how frequent like for example, colonoscopy in normal population, we were doing every 10 years here, we have to lung cancer, low dose CT scan every year. And what other criteria should, like in normal purpose, you are, we are not supposed to do the screening test because they are at low risk. The patient who has 20 pack year smoking history and the patient are currently smoking are quit within the 15 years. So in these patients, we will go for the low dose CT scan every year. And when we are supposed to stop the screening. The patient's age is either greater than 80 or patient quit smoking greater than or equal to 15 years. And if you suspect like patient has limited life expectancy, like any fatal illness, and you think um, patients are going to die very soon, like in six months, eight, eight months or in a year. So there's no need for the screening. And the screening test for the lungs relatively reduce the mortality risk by 20% as per studies. So I have a question for the lung cancer, like a 53 year old woman 
is evaluated during wellness visit. She is asymptomatic. All immunization are up to date. Colonoscopy for colorectal cancer screening in primary high risk human population uh, human papilloma virus testing are for cervical cancer screening were completed three years ago and mammography for breast cancer screening was completed one year ago. All results were negative. She has 20 pack years smoking history but quit five years ago. Physical examination is unremarkable, which are the following the most appropriate screening tests to perform. So chest radiography, low dose CT scan, sputum cytology are no additional cancer testing. If you want to read the question, stop video and think about the options. So as I told you, first focus on the age is like 53. We usually start for the lung cancer 50 uh, from the age of 50 and patient with 20 pack years smoking history and less than 15 years from um, after quitting the smoking. So here options should be answer is B and because we do lung cancer screening annual with low dose CT scan and person in, in between age of 50 to 80 with at least 20 pack years smoking history. Let's move next uh, most important and most common cancer like this is the cervical cancer screening. So cervical cancer screening when we do we usually start from age of 21 to age of 65 years age and from 21 to 29 like we divided into two criteria one from 21 to 29 second from 30 to 65 from 21 to 29 we usually do cytology and how frequent every three years cytology is the fifth year and from 30 to 65 we usually do cytology every three years or we have another option in addition to that, like cytology plus if we are doing the HPV testing every five years. And when we are supposed to stop this testing, patients at age greater than 65 and patients have negative prior screens are low risk. In these patients, we are supposed to stop the test. How do we know like how many prior screens, at least three consecutive negative cytology results are two consecutive negative cytology results plus HPV test like HPV also negative within the past 10 years and the most recent one should be within the five years. So in these patients which uh, like say these are negative prior screens and they are low risk patient we will stop for the screening. And if patient underwent further hysterectomy with cer uh, cervix removal for, for uh, because of any cause in this patient we also uh, and they, if they have prior negative tests and low risk, we will stop the uh, screening test for the cervical cancer. This is very high the hysterectomy with cervix uh, removal. Usually they put in question and they ask for you the part when we are going to do the cervix screening test next. So please remember this point for your USMD exams. And special guidelines like there are some special cases if patient is HIV or patient is immunocompromised when like they have little different criteria. So in the HIV patients and immunocompromised in both patients we are going to do tests at the onset of the sexual intercourse and at the time of the di or at the time of the diagnosis and annually uh, we will do initially in HIV we will do annually until the three tests become normal then we will follow the routine testing which is here like a cytology if patients is between 21 to 29 every three years or HPV and cytology testing every five years if 30 to 65 years. And patient immunocompromised, we usually do NL test with HPV co-testing. So now I have a, a question. Um, let's discuss this. Like a 26 year old woman is seen for routine wellness examination, personal medical history and family history are unremarkable. She does not smoke cigarettes. She has never had a sexually transmitted infection. She is 10 year monogamous sexual relationship with her partner. Pelvic examination and cervical cytology one year ago were normal. Which of the following is an appropriate cervical cancer screening test to perform next? So option A cervical cytology and high risk human papilloma virus co test now or cervical cytology in two years, cervical cytology now or primary. HPV test now. So if you want to think about the question and reread, just stop the video and reread the question and make an option in your mind. So in this question, the option is going to be B. 
because I told you remember the age like 26 so it comes in the criteria between the first like 21 to 29 where we usually repeat cervical cytology every three years so this patient's uh, cervical cytology was one year ago so next will be after the two years so 21 to 29 cytology every three years uh, so this is the last question of my this lecture like a 66 year old woman is evaluated during a wellness visit she reports no symptom she does not recall the last time she had a pap smear and medical records from her previous phys physician are not available she has no history of sexually transmitted infection gynecologic uh, um, sexual transmitted infection or gynecologic cancer or surgical history which are the following the most appropriate cervical cancer screening strategy for this patient so this is like little tricky question Usually we stop after the age of 65, but we have a criteria like if patient has consecutive negative results. So here in this case, we do not know about the previous results of this patient. So what we are going to do, what strategy should be like we do the cervical biopsy, we do cervical cytology with human papilloma virus testing or colposcopy or just discontinue the cervical cancer. So in this, uh, uh, the option should be B. Because we usually stop screening when patients' age is greater than 65 and negative prior screens like three consecutive negative cytology or two uh, cytology and HPV testing in the past 10 years. So we do not know about the past medical history of the patient, past like HP when she uh, went for the HPV last time and what were the results. So we, in this case, we have to repeat the test. So the suitable option will be cervical cytology with human papilloma virus testing, uh, not the D, like the discontinued cervical test. And thank you so much. If you have any questions, please comment below. And thank you so much. Take care.